Hi guys! I'm Liliana the Magnificent and welcome back to my city, Dukes of Honey. Today's video is going to be a two-parter and I'm delving into the topic of forge point production and maximizing that production in your city. So if you're new to the game or if you're seasoned, you may know that forge points drive every aspect of Forge of Empire. So Forge points are the currency that you use to grow as a player, to grow your great buildings, to interact with other players, and to interact during events. I'm going to direct you up here to your forge point bar. You get a new forge point in this bar every hour, and once you reach 10, the bar caps at those 10 until you spend them. Once you spend those 10, the timer will reset. So I highly, highly recommend always try to spend right when you hit that 10 or even a little bit before just so it's always producing those forage points up there and it's not capping and stopping you. I'm going to kind of give you a rundown of how to set up your city in order to maximize those forage points. So looking at my city, I collect about 350 forage points per day. This is kind of mid-range. I know there's a lot of players that get way more out of their city than I do. And then there's also players that are just starting off. And this video is really directed towards those players. I just want to give you as much knowledge as I can as I've been playing for three years. And I just want to share everything that I can to help you all grow. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually bring you into this Forge Point bar. And you can see right here, you can actually buy Forge Points. I'm going to caution against this. And there's a rationale as to why. So every single time you buy a Forge Point, at least in the coins area, it increases. So I think it's about by 50 or 100, I think. Let's do a little trial and see. So it increases every time by 50. So I highly caution to do this unless it's for an event. I know I just did it, but it's for teaching purposes. But every single event that happens, there's quests that are centered around buying forge points. Use your coins to do this. There is an option to buy diamonds with real money and then buy them that way. But try to save your diamonds for other things like expansions. So just be really conscientious of buying forge points. If you can, try to be patient. It helps in the long run, I promise. Also with this bar, as you're collecting your city, it'll cap you at 100 forge points. Once you hit 100 in this bar, you cannot collect any more buildings from your city. However, let's say you're at that 100 and you want to go do some encounters in Guild Expedition or in Guild Battlegrounds and you win forge points, those will add on to your 100 forge points. You just can't collect any more through your city. So then you'd spend those. All right, let me peek. I'm just looking at my notes here. So the first thing that I'm going to really delve into is the great buildings that give you forge points. So the first one is, I'm going to kind of travel down here, it's your Haga. It's an early middle age building, so it's the first one that you're going to come across, and it does give you forge points. This is the first one you're going to want to build in your city. The next one that you'll come across is your CDM, which is a late middle ages great building. Not only does it provide forge points, but it also provides attack, which is fantastic. After that, the next one you would come to is your cape. This is a post-modern era. This building gives you so many forge points. It's all it focuses on, but it really does a great job at giving you the amount that's at your level. Then next is your Ino Tower. This one is a contemporary era. This Great building is actually the easiest to level quickly once you get to like the 40s and 50s. It's very, very cheap to do so. What you need to be mindful of is the fact that population goes along with this. So as you're increasing forge points with each level, you're also you are also increasing that population. So a lot of people will pair that with also leveling their TRAS because TRAS provides a high number of happiness. It also gives you military units, so that's pretty helpful too. The next one you'll come across is your AO, which is an Arctic era. This gives you a nice critical attack bonus along with those forge points. 
And then the last one is your Kraken. This is kind of the same lines. It helps with attacking within your army and also those forge points again. Now I'm also going to talk about some of the great buildings that indirectly help you with forge points. The first one being this lovely, oh, now you can't see it. There we go. This lovely Temple of Relics, which is a no-age great building. You can build it right away once you start getting um, BPs for it, blueprints, which is either through GE or by taking spots on other people's TOR. So when you have, oh, come on. There we go. When you have your Temple of Relics, it initiates the Relic Hunt in Guild Expedition. So relics will pop up, and the more encounters that you do in GE, the more chances that you will come across a relic. Relics will contain lots of awesome rewards, but those centered around Forge Points will either be a 20 Forge Point reward relic or a 100 Forge Point reward relic. So you really want to... I'm going to say, woo, push for GE. The more you do, the more relics you'll get. Um, next one is your CF. I do have a video that pairs with this for cycling. But one of the quest rewards as you're cycling through your CF is a medium forge point packet, which is a five forge points. This one is a progressive era. Next, which is my most favorite Great building is your arc. So the arc initiates an arc bonus. So when you take spots on somebody else's GB, it's going to give you kind of a bump in reward on your forge points, blueprints, and medals. So highly, highly recommend that you focus on this arc. The more you do, the higher it gets. The more forge points you're going to ultimately get back. This arc is going to help if you go sniping within your hood. I'll have a video um, all about sniping. It's in the works. It's coming. It also helps when you have a daily swap forge point partner. So a daily swap forge point partner is someone who you're going to swap points with each day. So I have a couple. One of them um, is actually on my Ino right now. I'm not going to show her, but she gives me 100 forge points a day and I put 100 forge points on one of her great buildings. Once we reach first at half, then we level it uh, by filling in the other spots, and then that you get those rewards for getting first. When that arc bonus comes into play, you'll, you're looking to convert those forge points from your daily collection of your city into forge points in your inventory. So super helpful there. Um, the next one, and I don't know if I mentioned, the arc is a future building. Then the next two are actually oceanic, and I don't have them in my city, so we're going to go and find them so you can actually see. The first one is the Atlantis Museum. I specifically don't have even all of the BPs for it because I'm not big on plundering, but if you are big on plundering, this GB will give you um, potentially to um, a percent back on plunder. So if you were to plunder a building that has forge points, you could get some extras there. And then there's also the Blue Galaxy. I want to build this one. I just don't have space right now. So the Blue Galaxy um, is specifically for your city. So you pick out um, a GB and it'll give, or not a GB, an event building or any kind of production building, goods building, etc. And it'll give you double back on that, a chance of. So I've heard a lot of people will use this when they're collecting their crow's nest. That was from our most recent pirate event because there's chances of diamonds and forge points on that crow's nest and it will give you double back potentially. So that's one, both of those are oceanic. And then the last one is one of my new favorites. And it is this lovely guy right here, and it's your HC. This one gives you spoils of war, a chance of spoils of war, I should say, as you're attacking and completing army events. So one of the forge points back reward is a 200 forge point spoil of war, which is awesome. So really fun to have. Those are all of the great buildings. A little word of caution with any great building is... Go beyond level 10. Don't stop your great buildings at just level 10 because you're going to see that increase more as you go. <laughs> There's some uh, Christmas bells if you were wondering. <laughs> um, but 
be very cautious about how many levels you unlock at a time. This is my little soapbox, but unlock only one level at a time. You want to be in control of when that next level unlocks. And there are certain hot spots for every single great building. Like right now, I'm not going to go into it because I have people on it, but my CDM is in the 40s. So the minute I unlock it, people could snipe me for one and two at less than 1.9, but I want a 1.9 lock. So you want to be in control of when you unlock that great building and when you can post it. So I made this mistake when I first started of unlocking actually this one to level 30. So now I know one at a time. <laughs> Off my soapbox. All right, next thing that I'm going to have us go into is, I already went over TOR, I'm just peeking at my notes. I've already gone over sniping. I'm going to turn to the back of my page. Some other ways to earn some forge points are by visiting other friends' taverns. So... It's nice having friends that have upgraded taverns because you have more of a likelihood of getting a one forge point reward for visiting them. You also want to make sure your own tavern is upgraded as fully as possible because your chance of getting a forge point will also increase. There's certain things um, boost within it, whether it's the floor, the plate, the tablecloth. Those all kind of help you with earning rewards when you visit friends. Uh, the next one is your town hall. So looking at the town hall, you can see I received six forge points. Two of them come from emissaries and four of them come from my guild. So highly recommend that you look into a guild that is always constantly working on leveling and earning a higher level. As your guild levels, it earns also different rewards for everybody as a whole. One of them is forge points. So right now our guild gets four forge points a day. So really focus on getting into a nice guild that's always working and striving to do more. Um, then looking around our city, let's see if we can find any. Incidents give you forge points. We're going to peek and see if there's any flashing. Ah, ha, ha, here's one. We'll see what it gives me. Okay, coins. So incidences around your city could have coins, supplies, goods, forge points. The max I've seen is five. The minimum I've seen is two. So always kind of search your city, see if there's any incidences around. Norm normally they kind of give a little glow. Uh, next thing has to do with, let's see. Ooh, balancing your population and happiness within your city. So highly recommend as you're setting up your city, you can kind of see how I've set mine up. I set them up by sizes that match each other. So this row is all three by three. This row is all two by two. Now how happiness and population comes into play is if you have an overabundance of one, you're kind of minimizing the space that you can use on other things. So keeping those kind of near to each other keeps that balance nice. Now, mine is kind of skewed. I actually don't have any population per se buildings. I do have population GBs like my TOB, um, but I don't have any that are specifically houses or things like that. And I only do those for quests. Um, happiness, I actually don't have any happiness buildings in my city either that are just for happiness. Most of my happiness comes from event buildings or also, like I said, my Traz. Your Dresden too also gives happiness. Um, but if we peek into mine, you can see that my provided happiness is at 71 and my demand is at 62. So my people are in, are happy. They're not enthusiastic and I'm fine with that. Um, so I know that my productivity is not as good, but that's okay. Uh, but you want to try to keep those numbers similar as much as you can. And if you have an overabundance in one, ditch those buildings. Another thing that I'm going to caution about is victory towers. So I see a lot of lower players using a lot of victory towers. Those are a one by one. Let me see if I have any in my inventory to show what those look like. I do. Okay, so this little victory tower, it gives a certain amount of medals every seven days. And to be honest, it's hardly any medals and they're not worth the space. If you're actively... Um, have a daily swap partner or you're using an arc thread or you're working on leveling your arc, you're going to earn so many more medals in that one week time span than this little guy is going to give you. Instead, try to fill those one by one spaces if you have them randomly around with this new tactician's tower 
or also a watch fire over here. Both of those help your defending army. Um, but don't just have them all over the place. Instead, try to focus on building some forge point buildings instead. Uh, let me see. I'm just peeking to see if I... Oh, one last thing, at least for this video, before we delve into another aspect in a different video, uh, has to do with wishing wells. So wishing wells are great for people that are farming for diamonds. Let me see if I can find. Okay, so this normal wishing well is a three by three. It gives a random reward. There are wishing well sh shrink kits that then make make little wishing wells. So they are smaller, yes, but they're not guaranteeing you forge points. You get at max forge points two a time. Yes, they give you some diamonds, but that's you got to have a bunch of them to see a diamond return. Um, so I'll see studies of diamond farmers that will just have like 30 wishing wells at one time. But if you can guarantee having forge point production buildings, try to have those over a wishing well because yes, they'll give you goods, but you want to make sure that you have that forge point capacity at its max. Um, so along with that, people will put, you earn these, from GE, this one right here, Fountain of Youth. You can get those in GE. This is a three by three. It acts exactly the same as the wishing well, except for there is no function to actually make this, G uh, this building smaller. So I don't recommend putting this in your city. If you have to choose one, go for a wishing well because you can get a shrink kit and make it into a little wishing well. Um, there's also been some other event buildings in the past that give random rewards, but they're quite large. Um, try to stray away from those and go for things that you know will give them, give you specific um, forge points or goods that you're looking for, unless you're going to make a diamond farm. Then have at it. Have fun with it. Um, let me see. Is there anything else that I want to share right now? No. Okay, so that's everything that I'm going to share in this video, just so it doesn't get too, too long. I'm going to delve into the next video, and that video will be more about um, event buildings, maximizing those, how the shrines work, other buildings that give forge points, reno kits, one-up kits, uh, the settlement, antique dealer, etc. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for listening in on this one and hopefully getting you started on the process. All right, bye guys!